Hello and welcome to the Friday Climbing Daily Gear Show. On today's show we are chatting about backpacks and specifically bigger packs to fit in a day's worth of sport climbing or trad climbing gear or to take up a big mountain. Roll the intro. Okay, so a disclaimer. I am a complete backpack nut. I cannot stop buying them and I love them to pieces, but there isn't one bag that does everything as my cupboard full of bags shows. But a day bag like the ones we're looking at, a larger size, can be used for lots of different things. Now personally, I would always buy one with ice axe attachment points. That's because as an alpine climber, I need those. It's like a vital thing. But also, those packs I use for cragging or just taking to the gym. So with ice axe attachment points, it can be more versatile. So I've picked three bags to show you guys and one slightly smaller alternative. So first up is one of my all-time favorite packs, the Black Diamond Speed Zip 24. Now I actually had an older model of this backpack that I used and abused for years. In fact, I'm a bit gutted I eventually sold it because I hadn't actually found a better replacement pack yet. So stripped down minimal essentials of what this bag is all about. Only weighs 540 grams, has a clam style opening on the top so you can easily get to your stuff. I really like the big top pocket on here. This is super useful for like shoving a guidebook or photocopy notes or a head torch or lunch. It's just good to have a sort of access pocket without having to delve into the main bag to get to it. So I love that feature. I'm gonna show you guys all of these packs with the ice axes attached to it, just so you get an idea. It's got this very simple strap system on the top, and then you can uh, have a, a securing system down the bottom to keep all those sharp bits nicely kind of packed away and nice and streamlined. Compression straps on the side. These are great for, as the name suggests, compressing the whole bag down, keeping it nice and small. That's especially useful if you're humping up loads of stuff and then you empty your bag to go climbing and you wanna make it as small as possible. So compression straps are great. Try saying that in a hurry. Uh, down the bottom, we have a very minimal uh, waistband, which can be totally taken off if it gets in the way for when climbing. Shoulder straps, nicely contoured, firm but not too firm, and they stay, again, stay out of the way when you're climbing. There's a hydration system inside and also a removable bivy pad. Now, I used to think this was completely ridiculous as an idea until I got stuck up the midi recently and had nothing to sleep on. If I'd had one of these, I would have had a better night's sleep. So that is a good feature, I think. So that's the first one if you're looking for like a fast and light minimal bag, but it's still big enough to stuff all your trad and sport gear in. Okay, bag number two. So next up is a bag by a brand called Blue Ice, and this is the Dragonfly 25. Now, Blue Ice is a brand that's starting to develop into the sort of alpine, well, everything market, really. It's made right here in Chamonix, so it's pretty cool because I can see the warehouse from my house. So some features on this bag. It is really, really light, 460 grams, so lighter than the Black Diamond Speed Zip. The closure system is quite interesting because it's a bit different from normal. So to open it, you simply grab the two toggles and pull. It's a really, really quick way of accessing the inside of the bag. To shut it, simply pull on the drawstring. Now the advantage of this is it is very quick, as you saw. The disadvantage is it's not gonna be massively waterproof because there is always gonna be that little tiny hole that water can get into. The bag itself is pretty waterproof, nice resistible material and a DWS finish, so it's gonna shrug off some rain, but probably will start to suffer in a massive thunderstorm. A few cool features with this. There's a breathable shoulder strap here, so it will deal with moisture, and a 3D mesh style design on the back, so again, great at wicking away moisture. On the front, the ice axes are held in with a sort of twist system down the bottom and a drawstring at the top. This is okay, it's not my sort of favorite method of securing ice axes, but it does do the job and actually works better with straighter axes rather than a really technical one like this. I really like the mesh pocket on the side, really useful to shoving some water in, which you can get to easily. And a big pocket in the front that again, you can store your guidebook or your head torch or whatever you want really. For me, the Blue Ice Dragonfly 25 isn't necessarily a hardcore alpine climbing bag, but it is a brilliant day sack, and the ice axe strap attachments means you can crack an ice axe in there if you need to. Great bag, like the blue color, and I like the company. So this is definitely one worth considering if you're looking for a fast and light bag. So next up of our three big packs is a blow the budget model. 
the Nerona Trollvagen 45 litre bag. Now this is a bit bigger than the other models we've looked at today, so think of this as a multi-day bag or maybe if you have a massive trad rack. So as you'd expect with a bag of this price tag, there are some quality materials used here. Everything is brilliantly thought out and there are some incredible features. So let me show you. The carrying system, the straps, the padding on the back and the waist belt really help with strong loads and it feels amazing on your back. But all this can be stripped away. So the waist belt goes, the inside uh, sort of section can be taken out as can the top lid. So if you really want to go fast and light, this bag will adapt to your needs. As with the other bags, there is a massive pocket in the top. This one is especially big in the Nerona, so you can put loads of things on the top of your bag. There's this great side zip, which I've never actually seen in a bag like this before. So you just unzip it on the side and you can get to things in the middle of your pack or at the bottom of your pack easily without having to troll down through the whole thing. The ice axe attachment points are brilliant. Look, nice big pocket here for putting the picks into so they don't cut or poke people. Really bomber placements up here. It's just, why isn't every bag like this? This is the way to do it, I think. And on the side, again, we have the compression straps we saw in the other models that brings the whole size of the bag in. So if you're not carrying a lot of stuff within it, you can compress it all down and it doesn't get in the way. So there you have it, the ultimate do everything bag from Nerona. Yeah, it's not cheap, but at the end of the day, you are paying for quality. And if you want your bag to last a few seasons, a few years, well, hopefully many years, then this is the one for you. Now, finally, before we finished, I talked about a fourth bag, and this is a bag that has found its way into my heart. I love it. So this is the Petzl Bug. Now it's only 18 litres, but it is the perfect size for a day bag or to take up a multi-pitch climb. Or actually the other day I went up the midi lift in Chamonix and had a bit of alpine climbing with this thing. Having said that, it's not really an alpine bag because it hasn't got ice axe attachment points, but it does have a great rope strap over the top. Nice little pockets for putting valuables and stuff in, in the front. This little sort of webbing system here, you can clip carabiners or extra gear or sort of dangle your harness off. Got little compression straps, or you can maybe perhaps even put a little roll mat in the side of that. Feels really comfortable when wearing. The straps don't get in the way when you're climbing and the waist belt is so minimal, we just don't feel it. So yeah, I, I love this little thing. I got, I got given it, to be honest with you, as a sort of a gift and I have never, haven't stopped using it since. And I've used it for lots of different things. It's also just my everyday backpack. So if the other bags are a little bit above your budget or you want a smaller bag, check out the Bug. It's a great little pack, just full of character and yeah, really cool. So I reckon it's about time we had another competition and in a seamless transition from bags to chalk bags, this is what you could win this week. One of these kind of weird looking or quite cool looking bags, depending on how you see it. All you have to do to win one of those beauties is to tell me a packing story. So did you forget something vital when getting all your gear together? Did you grab the wrong bag? Did you lose a bag? Let me know your stories and the funniest, weirdest, or just one that makes me smile will win one of the chalk bags. As always on this show, we want to know your opinion in the comments below the episode. Have you used the bags I've talked about today? Do you think they're rubbish? Are they brilliant? Which one do you like best? Please let me know because I'll read all the comments. Okay, so that's all we've got time for today. Thanks for watching Climbing Daily this week, and I'll see you next week.